Hi everybody, Pastor Rachel here. I hope you've had a good Friday thus far. Um, welcome to my living room and my house, but really I guess it's more my uh, dining table converted into office space, trying to remain somewhat productive and, you know, busy, I guess, in this time where we are now on, by governor orders for California, we are more or less on a mandatory highly recommended stay home in your house only go out for essential items or doctor's appointments or outings that are necessary so i hope that we all take that fairly seriously here in california that we do our due diligence in keeping ourselves and others safe so if you really need something and need to go out or you need help and you're here in the town of ojai ventura or ventura county and you need something let me know i would be happy to help you with that and to go out if you are feeling unsafe of any sorts. So let me know how I can be of assistance and how I can be of compassion in this time. And uh, speaking of just staying busy, uh, Nick and I created a, what we call the quarantine to-do list. It has right now, looks like there's 17 things on our list. Things like we have a few movie series that we wanna watch. We want to do so much cleaning for different spaces in our house. We want to accomplish different things throughout the next at least month. And so if you have a list of things or you have a desire to accomplish a few things during this time at home, make a list. It's helpful to keep track and hold yourself accountable. And Nick and I are really excited to start checking things off of this list because I do think it's important for us to continue to grow together and to do it through accomplishments is really important for me and for Nick. So um, our quarantine to-do list, although we may change it to apocalypse list, we're not really sure. We're just kind of uh, keeping it open. It's a living document, <laughs> if you will. So I uh, hope that you do feel productive during the next days and weeks on the upcoming. And I hope that these videos, these reflections, thoughts, prayers, whatever they are to you are helpful and they bring light into a little bit of light into the uncertainty and a little like anxious freeness when we are all feeling really heavy and burdened by what's going on. You know, I have really loved doing so far these for the past five days. It's held me accountable too and reminds me that every single day I need to pause at some point and reflect on God and how God's moving in my life and just give thanks and give gratitude that you know, I have a house over my head, I have food in my pantry, and I have the ability to help others if there is a need. And that is a huge privilege, especially in this time. And so taking these moments each day, though it's only about five to 10 minutes each day, it's been really helpful for my soul. And I really believe in holding ourselves accountable. And when I talk the talk, I have to walk the walk. And so that's my goal all the time. How can I bring both and do both faithfully, the talk and the walk, you know? Um, so I just appreciate you holding me accountable and me holding you accountable and bringing God into this space. And we'll continue to do so as long as we can't meet in person. So today I've decided to read a little snippet from a devotional book called Bread for the Journey by Henry Nowen. There are devotionals in here for every single day of the year, and they're fairly short. They do not take very long to read, but they do spark a lot of reflection. And I flipped to today's date, and I really wasn't feeling it. Sometimes, you know, the readings just don't resonate in the most helpful way, at least for me some days. But I did flip to tomorrow's, and it was exactly what I needed to hear, especially in this time when I have a lot of time with myself, that I... It speaks about self-love, and I think that's really important, especially when we can frequently get in our brains and we can really talk ourselves into a certain, you know, mind space of negative thoughts, and we really should be seeking to love ourselves. And so this really spoke to me, and I'd like to share it with you all today. This devotional is called Claiming the Sacredness of Our Being. Are we friends with ourselves? Do we love who we are? It's a really big questions to start with. These are important questions because we cannot develop good friendships with others unless we've befriended ourselves. How then do we befriend ourselves? We have to start by acknowledging the truth of ourselves. We are beautiful, but also limited. 
rich, but also poor, generous, but also worried about our security. Yet beyond all that we are people with souls, sparks of the divine. To acknowledge the truth of ourselves is to claim the sacredness of our being without fully understanding it. Our deepest being escapes our own mental or emotional grasp. But when we trust that our souls are embraced by a loving God, we can befriend ourselves and reach out to others in loving relationships. I'm going to read that little last part one more time. To acknowledge the truth of ourselves is to claim the sacredness of our being without fully understanding it. Our deepest being escapes our own mental and emotional grasp, but when we trust that our souls are embraced by a loving God, we can befriend ourselves and reach out to others in loving relationships. Hmm. Claim the sacredness of our being without fully understanding it. That part is really jumping out at me. I think, you know, as I'm sitting here reflecting on that, that I really do try to rationalize and understand how could I possibly be sacred enough to be loved by my own self or by God or by others. I try to really deep down try and understand that, but it doesn't need to be understood because it's simply a fact that we are all loved by a loving God. It's really hard to completely let that, let that you know, um, desire to understand, let that completely go. I think a lot of us want to control and we really want to understand and we want to know the reasons behind and the why behind things. And sometimes it's, we don't need to. We don't need to understand why we are sacred. We just need to understand that we are. All of us. Our sacredness is important and it's real <laughs> and it exists in all of us. The sacredness of our being. I hope we go today and think about how we can actually claim that for ourselves. How we can actually be people who claim our sacredness and claim our worthiness and claim our loveliness and claim our wholeness. Hmm. I really like that. And that's going to be really difficult. And that's why it's a reflection that we won't get the answers to or fully grasp the meaning today. But take it with you through the rest of the week. And know that you are sacred and you are loved and you are worthy. And may you go knowing that. And may you go into this day knowing that you are loved. And may you go with the peace of God this day and every day. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great Friday night and many blessings.